you very much. That was lovely. Hello and welcome to a brand new series of Friday Night with Jonathan Ross. And you know, someone shouted out earlier, yes, I have lost a bit of weight. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Thank you. I'm feeling thin, I'm feeling thinner than Kerry Katona's Good Parenting Guide. That's how thin I am. <laughs> Probably not. Nice. But I don't think I've actually changed that much, right? I, I still look the same. While I was away, I was away in America. When we were coming back home, getting ready to do the series, uh, at the airport, I met a British family there. And uh, there was a, a mum, quite a, a yummy mummy, and uh, her mum, not, not so yummy, but lovely. <laughs> and their little children, the, the mum's children. And uh, as I walked past, a little boy came over to me. He's five years old or something. He went, excuse me, can I have your autograph? I thought, I wish the BBC could see this. Look at that demographic right there. It's incredible. <laughs> I signed it for him. Went to the toilet. When I came back, the mum was waiting for me. He said, I'm really sorry, but he's a bit disappointed. I said, why is it? He thought you were Tony Blair. <laughs> So I signed again, said sorry about the war. I didn't want him to go home. Uh, shall we have a look and see who's in the first green room of the brand new series, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah! Thank heavens you said that. Saying no would have left me in a very awkward position. <laughs> My first guest is the country's favourite cheeky chef. Imagine if Delia Smith had a love child with the artful Dodger. The result would be... <laughs> Mr Jamie Oliver, there he is. It's Jamie. Hi, Jamie. Good to have you back on the show. <laughs> Jamie's just back from America. He's been filming out there for quite a while. You probably noticed while he was away that Britain was a lot less pucker this summer. <laughs> but on the plus side, we could eat crisps without being bullied. <laughs> Mr. Jamie Oliver on the program this evening. <laughs> <Still done right. laughs> My next guest is the country's new cricket superstar, one of England's Ashes winning heroes. He is Stuart Broad, ladies and gentlemen. Thank <laughs> you, nice to see you. Thank you for joining us. The Ashes. God, it was exciting. We haven't seen the English and Australians at each other's throats like that since Jordan and Peter Andre split up. <laughs> My next guest is British writer. He's an actor. He's a director. You may have heard of him. You may have even seen some of his work. He is rising star, Mr. Ricky Gervais. <laughs> hey. Ricky Gervais. Hello, Ricky. Hello. It's lovely to have Ricky back on the show. You might know this, Ricky is now a global phenomenon. Yeah. <laughs> His shows have spread unchecked to every continent in the world. He has been officially upgraded to a pandemic. <laughs> Although, like swine flu, there are indications he's not quite as potent as we first feared. <laughs> Mr Ricky Gervais, ladies and gentlemen. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, we pride ourselves on bringing you the very best live music every week, and tonight it comes from I'm Phil is here, it's Mika! Yeah. Mika! <laughs> it's Mika! Yeah. Uh, shall we get my first guest out, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. Please uh, welcome Jamie Oliver. Lovely to have you back here. Good to see you. Lovely to be here. You're looking good. Now, uh, you know what's weird is I was thinking about Jamie uh, just last night. I was thinking, it only seems to me like six months ago that I first saw you, that you were this kind of fresh-faced young hoodie riding around on your scooter, pucka 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 bish bash bosh. <laughs> and now uh, you are, like, part of the UK. I can't think of the country without you. It's remarkable. Oh, thanks, mate. Is that a compliment? It is a compliment. Oh, cheers, bro. That's a, enjoy that. You won't get any more. No, that's, that was... Uh, that was that, thank you. That no, was... seriously, it's like you're, you're part of our life now. And then you go from there and uh, cooking for uh, the heads of state all over the world for, for the G20 uh, conference. Yeah. What a remarkable thing. How did that feel? Oh, G20 was mental. I mean, obviously, it was a great honour to be asked to do it. So how did they come about? They just phoned you? They phoned people Ed who Balls phoned me up, actually. It said, Jay, you know, we've been talking to the man and we wondered if, like, someone could come and do a bit of free food, you know, on the, on the ponce again. Hold on, does Ed Balls um, call you Jay? Is he kind of like no, Jay? I'm just, I'm just playing along yeah, okay. with, you know... J-Dog. Um, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and uh, <laughs> he, he said, um, you know, could you do this? I said, look, it'd be an honour, my honour. And uh, he goes, we'd really like 15... Um, you know, your students, your charity to be part of it. And so I it's a lovely thing because it's not... They know they're going to get great food, but also it shows what, what's going on in this country, it shows what you're doing, so it's kind of like... Uh, it's a good thing for them as well. Yeah, you? but we've got all the, I've got all 20 of the world leaders come in yeah. and all of their versions of MI5 or whatever you want to call it, and, like, you know, quite a few of my students have had criminal records, so I thought, oh, my God, what's going to go on? <laughs> um, so I said, you do realise it's going to take a little bit of extra, you know... <laughs> work and he said no worries we'll get that sorted so um it was it was, it was I, was I loved doing it but the problem was it, it was 
there's like a little three week period in England uh, just around that time where there's nothing. I mean, it's like. I mean, like local produce, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and I want to like, I want to big up British produce, yeah. so there was nothing in that. So I literally got stuff. Uh, we went to Jersey physically to get the, the very first little ones. We had to go to certain parts of England with Gulf Streams to get the asparagus and all sorts of nonsense. So that's that what you're did. cooking. So uh, you would think of the best English produce being our Jersey potatoes, yes. asparagus. Yeah, uh, lovely Welsh lamb. Try to get a bit of Irish. Ireland, Scotland. Yeah. Oh, nice. You're all here today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lovely. Yeah. But, you know, we wanted, I, wanted, I thought it was my job to represent a bit of everyone, um, and we did that. And it, it was a great honour and uh, a big experience. Uh, now, what was it like when you go in there? When you're cooking for those people, obviously, I'm, you're used to working under pressure. Yes. Anyone who works professionally in the kitchen works under pressure. Uh, but knowing these people are there, knowing it's going to be reported it was very hard. all over the world. I'll tell you why it was hard, because uh, bizarrely enough, and I don't mean this, um, uh, Gordon, as a, a slag, but like, they've got the worst kitchens in England. If you're worried about school dinners, that like these kitchens at number 10, I mean, I felt like I wanted to lend them a couple of quid. So the, the, um, <laughs> the kitchens in the back of number 10 aren't good? They're terrible. I mean, I, ha I had, uh, like, I don't know, 20, 25... Uh, the, the, the peers in one room and, and partners and, and then the boys in the other and a couple of girls and, and basically we had to run two kitchens so it's very stressful, quite hard and, 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 but even like you have to do it on state plates So hold it, but what's the equipment like? They presumably they have state of the art, a big cooker, nice, with just a microwave Honestly, what have got? I, I swear to God, Wandsworth Prison, which I've been to, right, um, <laughs> uh, has better gear a thousand percent than number 10 Downing Street Wow, wow, and how did the food go down? Uh, very well, I think. The plates came back good. Gordon was pleased, which is, you know, he's the boss at the end of the day. And, uh, and I got asked by the wife of Obama, um, out of surprise, to come out and see them. Wow. Which was a bonus, because I was, to I was go washing on. up at that stage. <laughs> <laughs> so, let me ask you about uh, uh, the, the, your background, because recently I was reading the newspapers that you found out that you're not... We, we think of you as being, you know, about as Essex as Essex can be. Yeah. We think about you, and it's, it's a good thing. Uh, quite right to be proud of that. But recently you've been saying that you've looked into your family lineage and there's, yeah. you, you go back to other parts of the world. Where, where do you trace the family ancestry? No, I from? found out that, uh, that we've got... Um, uh, the family eventually goes back to sort of Sudanese connections. So are you going to do anything about this? Are you going to go back and trace it? Because there's that very popular show like on BBC, to, yeah. of course, Who Do You Think You Are? That would be a fascinating I'd story. I'd love to do Who Do You Think You Are. Well, I bet they'll When I'm allowed to, but I work for Channel 4, you see. So they won't even let you do something like that? Not at the moment, but I'm working on it. OK, because that would be a, a fabulous story. Do you know anything about the families back there? Who, I, who you... You know, the other day, I, 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 I keep picking up bits, but on the other side of the family, um, there was a geezer called Joe Busby who um, uh, had 13 pubs in the East End and uh, used to basically do a version of school dinners and uh, 15, which is basically used to feed all the Polish and Russian immigrants and all the, um, all the, all the kids when they're on holiday. So it's all happened a hundred years before, so it's all a bit weird, really. That's weird, so it's kind and of... I've seen, it in I've seen that written um, in old papers from wow. the 1880s. That's incredible. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Uh, but that, how, how did that make you feel, though? Because it must be like, you know, you're well, doing what's been done before. I'll tell you what, when I, did, when I did 15 and the students, um, like, a lot of the people that I cared for around me didn't approve of it. They thought it was stupid and reckless and mad. And it, I just felt it was the right thing to do. And, and for me, personally, eight years later, 15's on its eighth year anniversary this October. We've got four of them, wow. you know, 80 students well, a you year. know, we should congratulate that, because uh, that is a fabulous achievement. And what a great British success story. And really, that's a, that is. It's an incredible yeah. thing you did. Anyway, how's life at home? Because you have a new baby lovely, this year. Yeah, yeah. A lovely new baby girl. So you have... Uh, yeah. You and Jules have three baby girls now, three Here children. Congratulations, yeah. what a lovely thing. Poppy, Daisy, and uh, the new one's uh, six months old, Petal. She's brilliant. She's got the best and name. It's Petal something rainbow, isn't it? Uh, uh, Petal Blossom Rainbow. Oh, well, a great but, name. Um, but Jules takes care of the names, as you can well imagine. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, they're lovely. I mean, I've just got to the point now where it actually hurts to think how much I love them. It's just like, oh, my God. Because yeah. they're just... They're great company, uh, and they just turn into beautiful little girls. And the new one is, like, she's proper well-behaved as well. Really? Because she's, what, five months now? Yeah, months? she does what she's told. She goes to sleep. <laughs> she, like, yeah. uh, do you let the other girls in the kitchen, do they help you out? Are, they, yeah. are you encouraging them uh, to do that? I swore that I wouldn't um, impress upon them my career. And uh, Poppy's, Poppy's like, whatever. Uh, Daisy, however, is all over it like a rash. So and, she's... And, and the other day, and I said, right, Daisy, she goes, I really want to skateboard. I said, look, you know, we don't get nothing for free in this life. Um, if you learn, and this is so wrong, if you learn all 25 of the herbs growing in the front garden, um, <laughs> right, forget it, by look by smell and by taste, <laughs> and, and the taste blindfolded, by the way. Uh, right, uh, hold it, gonna... hold it. Someone calls social services. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is just wrong. Do you, do you know what? It, uh, I, uh, 
The thing is about kids, and this is why I'm even more passionate about kids and school and teaching our kids at school while mum and dad are busy working to look after himself. Life skills, right? You know, and every kid in this country should get that. Well, no, cooking is a, it's a very pleasant and it's a good family experience. Yeah. I want to talk to you about something, because I, I did a bit of cooking through. I cooked something from Damien's cookbook just last night. <laughs> and I'll tell you about it, and the cookbook is impossible to follow. <laughs> but I'll talk to you about that later. Um, because you need some help on that. No, you, need, um, you say what you've got to say, then okay. I'll come no, back. No, no, we'll talk about that in a minute. First of all, though, because uh, one thing I was going to ask you about the girls, and this leads you into what you're doing at the moment, or the American series, is, is keeping them away, keeping kids away from what we call junk food. Is I know uh, been something you've been very keen on. How do you keep your kids away from that? Are you? I don't think it's healthy to keep them away from it. Completely. Because actually, I grew up on someone's birthday, we'd go down to Mackie D's, we'd go to the Harlow Tubes yeah, yeah. and have a swim, and it was a treat. So you're saying occasionally moderation is fine? Well, I, I think it's wrong to sort of say you can't do that. The thing is, I've almost become famous for being like an angel. Mm. And, and I'm, I'm much more balanced about common sense about stuff than you, one might believe. OK, let's talk about America, because that's what we think of as yes. the home of junk food, where a lot of the stuff we yeah. now have problems with come from. I think it probably is, it's fair to say that. It is, it's fair to say that. And certainly, I, I was reading over there that uh, the average family, regardless of this economic downturn, the average family over there eat out five times a week, though. Yeah. Five, a lot of them don't cook at all. They eat In out. a lot of the major cities, they don't even build kitchens anymore. Just yeah. a hole for their microwave. It's incredible. Is that all they do, really? <laughs> yeah, it's true. Not such a bad thing, necessarily. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I'm obviously biased, but I mean, I think what I wanted to do with America was, you know, everyone's done to death, you know, sort of, you know, um, obese people and junk food. And I think it's boring after a while. I mean, look, it's still one of the biggest places, destinations in the world for immigration. People still go there because of, you know, uh, religious conflict or, or, or for a better life for their family or well, God it's, knows it's, what. There's no two ways about it. There is magic great, there. It's there a great is. country. And the food can be great. And you've obviously... Uh, what, what, I, I yeah. saw the first episode. It's called Jamie's American Road Trip. I don't know if you saw the first one, but they really, the people you work with, you, you've uncovered some brilliant personalities yeah. and some great stories there. What are the most memorable ones for you? I mean... It, the way I look at those six programmes, they're like six different films. They're completely... They're not really linked. They're complete, they could feel like six different countries. So we went from... And we had a lot of luck as well. We were in Louisiana, New Orleans, just after Gustav hit. Mm. You know, and that sort of just turned into a programme about community and spirit and coming together and why would you live in a place that gets kicked up the jacksie every couple of years and do you know what I mean and everything yeah. that you own just drifts away yeah. and then we had Georgia we we're in Georgia just after Obama got in and obviously Georgia's the place where uh, you know civil rights Martin Luther King so it's about black food soul food and sort of what you know I thought soul food was like funky stuff do you know what I'm saying um, but it wasn't soul food was about was that a Sudanese, survival was that a life. Sudanese accent you did not, just say yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no but I, 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 seriously I mean I, soul food to me I thought was a sort of a gesture thing soul food was like clasping onto life. It was basically all, all the posh, noble white people or immigrants that were running the shop would give all the offal and the offcuts. So they the had slaves. to cook with pig knuckles, they had to cook with just greens yeah. and stuff like that. But Basic, see, yeah. this is the thing that people don't... When I did the Ministry of Food uh, in Rotherham and stuff like that, what, the thing that upset me about Britain today is that we think that looking after your family, cooking for your family, is uh, a middle-class thing. And I'm like, oh, my God, everything that I know that is worth knowing is from people that have struggled. You know, food and sitting around the table and anything good about life that can bring your family together is really cheap. Mm. It's, but the only thing you've got to have is the knowledge to do it. So, like, you know, when you look at soul food, like, they cook some great stuff out of horrible stuff. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I think when there's that bit of jeopardy in life, you can pull out some great recipes. Um, OK, the book is out as well with Jamie and America. I was cooking for this last night, and we're going to cook now. Jamie's going to cook for us right now here in the studio. Yeah. Right, Jamie. It's very exciting. Here's a bit. And I thought... I thought in advance of the show I would cook something for the book last night, so I looked through for a fairly healthy recipe, and I, I've chosen one which was tuna seared on a bed of homemade salsa with some courgettes on. And you know you talked earlier on about cooking with the family. I prepared some of it with my youngest daughter this morning, and it was wonderful. I felt so close to her. We really had a great time, and she did a terrific job doing the courgettes with the mint and all that. Yeah, she liked but the that? instructions of this book are almost impossible for anyone to follow. Yeah. Uh, it says, for example, let me ask you a question, ladies and gentlemen. If you, if you read a book and it says, get the vegetables ready, and then you've got green peppers and you're going to cook them on a griddle, would you cut that. them up first? Don't, don't believe what he says. You would? Say, just say yes. Would you cut them up first? Yeah. Of course you would. Right. You right. don't. You put a whole do, big pepper. Do you want pepper. the true story now? Yeah. Right, he phoned me up last night. It sounded like a scene out of Blair Witch. <laughs> Can I just explain? Basically, he wouldn't do what he was told in black and white. It didn't make sense, that's why. What's the point of following a recipe if it clearly isn't what you're meant to be doing? It said grill a whole pepper and tomato. Yeah, but that you makes... You chopped it up. Well, of course, because it <laughs> makes sense to chop it up. I assumed it was a misprint. Well, and then yeah. I phoned Jamie and he didn't pick up, so I called Gordon Ramsay and told him I was trying to put one of Jamie. <laughs> he did as well. Yeah, yeah. 
Now, what's this? This is... Uh... Right, I've got some ribs for you, brother. Wow. Now, the, these are baby back ribs, um, and, and, and anyone that loves life should have a little go on these every now and again Especially in life. Especially vegetarians. Yeah. So this is from where? This is from the, the, the western this side? This is really cowboy country, Wyoming, Montana. I mean, that's, that's kind of one of the flavours of America. Spices, slow mm. cooking, glazing it up in the end. That is delicious. Do you want me to have a little go on something else? I love this. Um, <laughs> these, these are called gorditas, right? Gorditas is a Mexican dish. Have we got a, we got a little oven in there somewhere? Yes. Is, there. Are you want me to unpack this? Do you want me to turn it on for you? Well, this makes a mess, for God's sake. Mmm. <laughs> uh, so, uh, that's good. I wish we had enough to share, but we've only got a yeah. little bit. <laughs> it's so good, it'd be wasted on you. <laughs> right. Darling, do you want me to turn this on for you? No, it's on, darling. Is it on? It's on. All right, I suppose you do know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been cooking for, then? I've been cooking since I was eight years old, yeah. Oh. And, you know, I, I think that's the point. Kids can be... I mean, honestly, like, my knife skills today are exactly the same as they were when I was the age 10. Well, I will challenge you to that, then, because last night I was uh, doing some chopping, as you know, a bit of cooking on my own, yes. uh, you know. And uh, I was cooking a, a, chopping up some cucumber. I did it so quickly... Really? I challenge you to do a cucumber chop-off. Mate, you could, there's no... <laughs> what, do you think that you could beat me? Yeah. Don't be silly. It's a blur. When my hands are moving, it's a blur. That white right hand is going like that, I tell you. <laughs> yeah. It's a blur. Well, well, in that case, maybe I do agree with you. <laughs> um, so, these come... are, what, are, what are these things here? They're these, gorditas. What's in them? These are called gorditas. Um, it's just heating up now. Gorditas is Mexican for little fat girl. And, um, yeah, I know, and it's sweet and so complimentary. Um, Let me ask you a question then. Would you, uh, would you open an American style restaurant over here? Would you do Mexican food over here the way? Because I love uh, Mexican food, food cooked properly. Yeah, yes. Mexican food. In actual fact, in, in February next year, we're doing a, we're a little restaurant with charcoal and wood, and we're going to do quite a lot of su South American sort of inspired stuff. Um, there's some chili sauce. Have a little try of that, big oh, boy. I love chili sauce. That'll get you going. Um... <laughs> oh, that has some poke to it. You're going to so regret that, honestly. And tomorrow morning, you'll be crying. Oh, Jamie, why did I do that? Just I'm regretting just, it already, Jamie just, Oliver. Just... <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, it's quite a nice bird. <laughs> yeah. I can't tell you how hot that is. He's been really good. He's really showing off right now. Um, but he's going to be in so much to make, to pain tomorrow morning. I'm... <laughs> you can text me. What? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. I wish I'd done that now. Oh. Well, look, let's, let's talk about what okay, we're doing. So, you're doing is that salsa? Very you're simple now? salsa tomatoes, some spring onion, oh. some coriander and the stalks, some uh, lime zest, ah. um, some salt and pepper. I'll just finish this off. Right, we're going to hit that with some lime. Zest it. What's clever is when you introduce heat or chilli and stuff like that, what they often do is put some apple or pear or fruit in there. Oh, blimey. <laughs> no one noticed. Put it back in. <laughs> Ten second rule. Go and put it back in. Yeah. <laughs> Germs can't get on it, can they? OK, Possibly. so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plate some of these up. I've got it all in there. Um, do you want to try one of these? I'll try, I'll try, a, I'll try a little fat oh. girl. Right. right, so we've got the gorditas. You can... It's a, very simple to make these. <coughs> Hot sauce. And then... <laughs> then we're going to put this salsa. You know, when you do your salsas, hit it with the lime and the chilli. Is this the right? bish bash boss pucker? Uh, with a, no, I don't say that anymore, honestly. I was 22 and say, was... say it one more time for old time's sake, go on. I haven't said it for ten years. Go so on, I'm... one more time, go on. Look, it's a little bit this, a little bit that, you know, just bish it, bash it, bosh it, it's pucker. I'm yeah! Oh. Uh. oh, dear. Yeah. You know, Ricky, I want you to do the dance later as well, you know that, don't you? A little go. <laughs> <laughs> My lips hurt. OK. Have a little go on that. All right, OK. Come on, girls. So, this is a proper bit... You ain't seen cooking telly like this before. Yeah, right, cool. when I went to... Um, cool. All right. When I went uh, on the next programme... When I went to Wyoming, they got a classic dish called Rocky Mountain Oysters. OK. Right? And I want you... This, this is basically a bullock's... <laughs> right? What we've got here is a lovely... <laughs> right? And what we need to do is skin it first. So we I just don't know if I can watch like that. that. And you just slip it. Ah! It's lovely. What has right. got into you, man? Right. So once you've done that... Have you ever eaten these before? I've never eaten these before, and I don't think I'm going to tonight. But you know what? From here, it does now look just like a, a bit of meat. Yeah. 
And the lovely job these have done. If you eat meat, I suppose, why be squeamish about this? Yeah. What? Have you eaten... Were there, did they offer you stuff in the States that you didn't want to eat? Were there parts just, of... Just stop talking for a minute, right? <laughs> I'll, I'll put them in flour. Salt, pepper, cayenne pepper, a little bit of egg, a little bit of breadcrumbs. I've deep fried them until crisp and golden. Then I've got a bit of garlic mayonnaise. OK. Lemon, put it in that mayo. Fellas, you want to try one of these or would that be a busman's yeah. holiday? <laughs> It's quite nice. You can't get enough of it, can you? <laughs> it's actually quite nice. Right. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. I appreciate you doing that. Because, ah. you know, it's all meat. Let's hear it for Jamie and his marvellous cooking skills. Yeah. Now, let's share this away. Right. Okay. It tastes good, but you wouldn't order it, would you? Would you order it if you were in a restaurant? Uh, if they had other, part, other cuts of the meat? Well... You wouldn't say, you know what, I really fancy that, would you? Yeah. But I sort of did try it out there. I like the fact you clean as you go. That's a good thing. All right. Uh, we're going to stand up. We should time this, because I reckon I can do... Should we do the whole cucumber? You want to do the yeah, whole yeah, one? Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. OK, I reckon yeah. I can... What time do you reckon you can do that in? Uh, three seconds. No way, three seconds. All right, whatever you do, I'll do it faster. All OK. Right? We'll time it. When you're ready, you go first. You ready? Ready, set, go. I don't know. I've got a director's cut on that. Seven seconds, apparently. Seven, Seven seconds. seconds. All right, you ready? Here we go. <laughs> Ow. Oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Jamie! Jamie, help me! Yeah. It's all right. It's OK. I've got it. No, no, but I'll tell you what, the thing I've is, even though that's not the real thing, that made me feel like, oh, queasy. <laughs> What do, you mean, what do you mean it's not the real thing? <laughs> <laughs> I've had to sit all the way through trying not to do anything with my left hand, cos no. it's like... <laughs> Jamie, that was great. It's very messy, but uh, great. And you are better cooked than me, marginally. Uh, thank you so much for being here. No, it's yeah. lovely. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm sure, like me, you're a big fan, but it's so lovely to have you back on the show. Thanks, Mr Jamie Mary. Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't too <laughs> That didn't take too good. That was great. Shall we get my next guest out, ladies and gentlemen? Will you please welcome Stuart Broad, ladies and gentlemen? Nice you, entrance, that. You, you, must, you must be getting used to this sort of thing, I imagine. <laughs> hey, great to have you here. Thank you for joining nice us. We'll, we'll let the confetti out. Congratulations on winning the Ashes. Thank you. Uh, England has it once again. Uh, you must be... <laughs> uh, uh, the stuff. Great moment, of course, here. Uh, this is... Uh, I didn't realise this until after the event, I really, but it, not the first time that your family's been involved in this kind of thing. No, my uh, dad won it about 20 years ago. Wow, so, did you know um, that? Isn't that incredible? Yeah, His dad won the Ashes as well. That's, uh... Yeah, I think it's the... Um... You, you had to do it then, really. Yeah, I think it's the first sort of father-son combo, so I think it's, it is. Uh, it's quite a nice one. But uh, it was it was quite nice. I think the first text I got after after winning was um, bragging rights over to you because he's always said you you, you won't sort of pass me uh, until you win the Ashes. So it was uh, it was a nice text to get. And have you started rubbing it in yet with him? Have you started? Of course, every yet? day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, you, maybe you'll win it again as well. You can get two, and then Touch you can really uh, nice. give him a hard time. What a, so your dad, uh, Chris Ball, he was uh, how long was he playing professionally for? Oh, uh, about 15 years, but I think he played for England for about four. Wow, what an exciting yeah. thing to have. I mean, it must have been great for you growing up as a kid to have your dad having done that. And I guess cricket was always on the cards. If you were going to go into any sport, because of your dad, it would have been cricket. Yeah, I think so. I mean, um, I've got quite a cricketing family. Um, so uh, my mum's sort of been through the cricketing career of my dad and, and uh, everyone's really keen on it. But, I mean, I never got pushed. I never um, got forced to play cricket. It's something I love doing. Um, and I'm very fortunate to be in the position I'm in. And your sister's yeah. involved uh, with cricket as well, isn't she? Yeah, I saw her on the uh, little celebratory sort of... She's a bit embarrassed by that, but... Um, yeah. No, uh, she's a, the team analyst, so it's 
she sort of tells us where to bowl and, and if it all goes wrong, we can blame her. Wow, so really, so a woman is the brains behind it all then? Exactly, yeah, like all things. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean, there must, be, there must be women cricket teams, I guess. I don't think I've ever seen one. Is there yeah, a I think, um, well, the England side are, are the best in the world. They've, really? So they're the best, yeah, in, the best in the world? Yeah, they're the best in the world. Yeah, they've won all sorts the past couple of years I and mean, I can't even keep up with it. So, uh, and so does your sister want to play? Does she play as well on no, the side? No, I don't think so. She just, uh, she enjoyed, she did a, sort of a performance analysis degree, so it's just happened she fell into cricket. And now you, we've all noticed you're, you're, you're a very attractive young man, congratulations on that, but you're a very tall young man as well. Uh, how tall are you, Stuart? Um, six foot six. Now, would I be right in thinking that having that height, that's an advantage for a bowler, for fast bowling? Would that be...? Of course, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it gives you more bounce at the crease and it, it creates a few more difficulties. I'm, I'm quite fortunate, actually. I think it was fate. I, um, I grew about a foot in a year uh, when I was 17. Um, well, a foot in a year. year. Yeah. Wow, I'm, your I'm poor mum. How many pairs of shoes <laughs> did you get through? It was a nightmare. I mean, everyone was, I was in sort of miracle grow and all that sort of stuff. But um, I, uh, I got back after the school holidays and no one recognised me. Wow, sort of like, so. Who are you? I was like, oh, I'm Stuart. I was like, oh, yeah, you were last year. You're so, about you, that big. so you went away, you were like, what? Well, so you're six foot six now, is that Yeah. Right? So you went away five, six? Yeah, I was a little sort of short, podgy kid and I just sort of went. I got stretched. Wow. wow. Well, is your dad tall? Is anyone tall this tall in your family? Yeah, my, uh, my dad's six foot three, um, but bizarrely, my granny's about six foot. My dad's mum, so that's quite strange when you go six around their house. Granny? So, yeah. Well, she's still six foot. <laughs> yeah, she's still. Because <laughs> people get smaller, they go, she must have been about eight foot. <laughs> 20. She's a six foot grand. Yeah, she carries that's it beautifully. Well, I find that mm. A terrifying, B, that would make a great horror film. <laughs> <laughs> Attack of the six foot grand. <laughs> um, but, but, you know, what, how exciting for the whole family to see you go on and do that. What a, what a, that must have been a tremendous thing when you, how was it when you first went home after the event? I know you went out and celebrated with the team afterwards, of course, but to go home, both you and your sister involved, what an event. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, we've not been home. We went, um, went straight, we obviously celebrated till the, the early hours and then. Well, uh, let's ask you, let me ask you about that because uh, I know uh, some of the cricket team are known for enjoying a night out. OK. Uh, obviously, here you have very good cause to celebrate. Uh, what time did you start the celebrations and what time did, did the last one standing end it? Um, I've got to be honest, I can't really answer the last man standing because I can't remember much of it. I think <laughs> I, mean, uh, I read in the papers the next day it was about 3 a.m. But, but you um... know you've had a great night out when you, you don't know what happened until you read about it in the papers. The next day. <laughs> well, I woke up the next day still in my whites with the two medals around my neck <laughs> and uh, I was... Mm, what's happened there then? A little read of the paper. Oh, well, beautiful. Now, again. normally, <laughs> when I was raised, if I fell asleep with my friends uh, at a drunken party, I'd wake up with something like <laughs> face written up here or something like that. <laughs> Does that happen with you? Do those sort of practical? I think it did happen in 05, yeah. I think um, <laughs> Freddie was on the bus, wasn't he? And, um, and a few of the boys had he'd fallen asleep, and a few of the boys had had got into him and written on his face. What did they write on his face? Oh, I think they drew sort of a big moustache on him and something I probably couldn't say because my mum's probably watching. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me and we'll cut it out. Uh, I think they just called him a <laughs> across the <right? laughs> <laughs> Language like that with your mother watching. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till your six-foot granny hears. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and now, uh, Freddie Flintoff, uh, Andrew Freddie Flintoff, uh, obviously you, you've played with him, you've known him for a while. How much did he influence you? How much has he helped you in the game? Oh, massively. I mean, um, he's, of course, retired from Test cricket now. That, he's, um, that's it. But he, he's still got some games in him, hasn't he? I mean, yeah, he has. Yeah. I mean, he had an operation not long ago, that, so he's going to be out till February time. Um, but I certainly hope to play with him again. And he's, it's not so much on the pitch that, that he helps you, it's off the pitch. And in, uh, he's obviously played so much cricket, the pressure scenarios he can talk to you about, and he's seen it all before. And um, I think the biggest thing about him is that he, he knows how to enjoy himself. and. And I think we all know that, my, certainly. The, uh, yeah. my, uh, my biggest le lesson is cricket is as long as I enjoy myself on the pitch, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. And as long as I'm having fun and having fun with friends. And, and uh, another important lesson is enjoy each other's success. So when someone does well, you've got to have a, have a beer with him and say, well done. And, and he's certainly good at that. What's the fastest you've bowled? What is the... Because I know they've called me. What's the fastest ball that you've uh, ever... I think it's ever about 93 mile an hour, probably. Wow, that's ridiculous yeah. speed. You could take someone's eye out. With that. <laughs> Do you ever worry that you're going to hurt someone? Because if they weren't looking at the right time, you, they could take a nasty bump. No, I mean, because I have to bat as well, so they always come in and try and knock my head off. Yeah. So it's my, my chance to get my own back. What's that with the ball? Because uh, what's that thing when people come away, away they, do, they do things to the ball which is sort of like borderline illegal in the game? Isn't it, it? It's highly illegal. What is it that you do there? You, do, yeah, you ever done um, any of that? You ever tried any of that action? I haven't, no. It's, um, it's basically... Oh, you got a ball as well. I've got a ball here, look That's at that. That's good, that. Well spotted, well recognised. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what do they do? They, they edge away at the, uh, the stitching and then they can... No, well basically, um, the ball swings, it, basically it's the, the rough and the, the smooth. So you've, you've got to have one side smooth and one side rough. Uh, the, the smooth side, um, 
obviously stays quite smooth from, from licking it, shining, yeah. and that's why you see all that's people. That's why you see all the rubbing like that. Yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this side has to get rough, so I mean. Let's pick at it. We don't know, of course. But you would never, the, I know that. <laughs> there's ways you throw it into the ground. Um, if you try and throw it at the stumps, if it. So if and it's what does stump, that do? It means you can change the it way it, it bounces. Gets, and it gets it rough, so you can, you can sort of pick at the leather like that, and it, and it gets a little bit rough. And how does that help you? What does that do to the ball? It just makes the ball, uh, makes the ball move off the straight. Unpredictably? Going, yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah. Um, the Ashes DVD is uh, all on uh, here. The whole thing you see, the Ashes series 2009, the official story. Um, one thing you don't see much of in this, and I don't know if you encounter it so much anymore, what about the, the sledging that's meant to go on? This is uh, the kind of... Um, is it good-natured or is it mean-spirited, the kind of insults that get bandied around between the Australians <laughs> and the English players? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very varied. I mean, the Aussies have been renowned for being great sledgers throughout the years, but actually before this series, uh, their cricket board warned them to say, look, we want to have a better image. Um, can you just quieten it down? So it was brilliant as an English player. You could have a word and they couldn't say anything back. So you <laughs> so felt what kind of the things, world. But, without getting too, uh, too, I mean, too gruesome, what kind the, of things to say? The South, the South Africa series actually last year was a strange one for me because we played them over four months and they were calling me Baywatch for the whole time. So I'm sort of thinking, David Hasselhoff, that's, yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. Not a bad little compliment, that. But why are they complimenting me? They're supposed to be abusing me. Um, so at the end of the series, I was like, look, why, why, why are you calling me Baywatch? I mean, I can't really understand. He goes, well, you obviously look like Pamela Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you when he woke up in bed with Shane Warne that he was worried about it. <laughs> uh, someone told me that when you come out, they sing Dude Looks Like a Lady. Is that why? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I hence well, chopped my hair off a little bit. <laughs> it's a good... They have a sense of humour, then. It's not mean spirit. That's not the English fans. That's the Aussie fans. <laughs> uh, can, let me show you this photograph here. What's, what exactly is going on here? I, uh, the, what's... Uh, <laughs> Oh, no, no. How, how does that come about? How were you surprised in the locker room? What happened there? <laughs> I, um, I actually got a phone call saying, would I like to, to do something for charity? And I was like, of course, yeah. I mean, I'd love to. Was, this was probably two years ago. Yeah. Um, what does it involve? They go, oh, it's just a photo shoot in London. That's cool. We're, it's for Hugo Boss. We'll, we'll get you down there and, and uh, sort it out. So I was like, all right, that's, that sounds good. Good. Something I don't usually do. Um, so I rock into the studio and there's about eight women all sort of making a cup of tea, look like giggling around, and there's three of us, of course. <laughs> and um, they go, right, guys, if you just nip into the uh, change room and whip your clothes off, and uh, we'll bring in some gowns. So I'm like, whip your clothes off? What do you, you can't be serious. Like, yeah, yeah, we'll, I, we'll, I we'll bet get... you thought it was Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> um, so obviously we walked in, and, and uh, the photographer was setting up, and, and that was the final, final shoot, but we must have tried seven or eight different positions, but right. I think that's the most same. <laughs> Now, here's, uh, here's one thing I'd like to ask you to do, if you don't mind, is I, I'm quite a keen sports person myself, as you probably know. Uh, and uh, Jamie used to play a bit of cricket, didn't you, Jamie, when you were a kid? Yes, yeah. my friend, yeah. Ricky, yeah. I, obviously you don't play much sport anymore, but you used to, uh, <laughs> you, you used to be a mean tennis player, I believe. And someone's like, Mika, you ever play any cricket? Uh, no. OK, well, that's all about a change. <laughs> um, Stuart, would you, I'd love to see which of us can deal with one of your fast balls. Yeah, okay. of course. After the show, we're going to have... Uh, I'm going to talk to Mickey and then we're going to have Mika. Would you mind? We've set up a little kind of cricket area out the back there. Uh, if you want to warm up for this, I want, yeah. you to, I want you to hold back. Ricky, I know you're a bit scared of this, aren't you? <laughs> I am terrified uh, 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 of batting. I, I used to go in the nets at school and there were psychos trying to take my face off. So <laughs> I am terrified. You'll be all right. You've got a bat in front of you. Whack it with the bat when you... Uh, oh, OK. Sorry, yeah, OK. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, brilliant. So, <laughs> we'll, we'll do that after. Is that OK, yeah, Stuart? OK, we'll do that with Stuart. Stuart. Great pleasure to meet you. Thank you for coming on. Pleasure. Congratulations. And uh, come on, let's keep winning the Ashes. That's it's so exciting, isn't it? Take care, Australia. Lovely to have you here. Mr. Stuart Bold, ladies and gentlemen. Great stuff. Thank you so much. And thank you for passing over. Stuart Bold. Uh, shall we get my final guest out? Yeah. Jamie Oliver was a lovely starter. Stuart was a satisfying main course. Now it's time for a big old pudding. Will you please welcome him? <laughs> Mr. Ricky Gervais, ladies and gentlemen. Ricky Gervais. Thank you. Oh, look at that. Well, how, what how, a lovely audience. It's exciting. What a lovely back. audience. They're a lovely crowd. Thank you for joining Ooh. us. It's Ricky Ooh. Gervais, ladies and gentlemen, dressed in his customary black. I haven't seen you for ages. Well, you've been working very hard. I've been away you? and I've been in America. Anything interesting happened to you in the last year I should know about? <laughs> Okay, so how's the summer been for you? Where do you spend the summer now? Do you spend... You've been working? Did you spend well, it working or were um, you away? This summer, uh, 
I was filming in England, actually. So you've been filming... This is a British film you're making? Yeah, it's American money, but let's say But you're, but you're not in it, are you, this film? I'm in it a little bit, but, um, no, it's got a, a young, exciting cast of, uh, of 20-somethings. Wow. So, uh, yeah, um, it's, it's sort of cool and sexy, so me and Steve couldn't be in it. Um, no, we're, we're, it's, it's, um, it's mine and Steve's first um, film together. We wrote and directed it, and it's... it's um, I'm very excited about it. It's like a love letter to England. It's set. Uh, yeah. Sorry, what's that, that? That, we just put a picture of it. That wasn't intended to get a I, laugh, but it, it automatically does. But, <laughs> but do you know what? People think that I'm the freak. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go, no, I, I'm like normal <laughs> height. <laughs> That's incredible, isn't Stephen it? Stephen will make one hell of a fast bowler from the look of things. He, um, he is rubbish at sport. Is he? Yeah, he, he, the only thing he had a chance at was high jump and he came second. Because <laughs> uh, he says his glasses fly off and he can't do anything <laughs> when his glasses fly off. Uh, so this movie, it's a comedy or it's a comedy drama? What is it's it? It's more of a drama. There's funny bits in it. Um, and, uh, but, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a... You know, a love letter to England. OK, and yeah, this, was, this was the thing... Am I right in thinking? This is the... It's not out for quite a long while, this one. It's, um, 9th of April. But you were... This was going to be, uh, the TV series, wasn't it? You were going to do this as a TV series initially? Originally, it was... It sort of predates extras, but then we thought, we have you know, it's ripe to do extras now because of all the, you know, the people... people knew who you were, you could yeah, get access to those access stars. access in Hollywood, yeah. and yeah. so we did that, and we sort of saved this, but, um... Uh, yeah, this is sort of set in the early 70s in a sort of small town, and it's sort of about class and... And growing up in, and in it's the set in a place week. like where you grew up. It's set in a place like exactly, Reading. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One Whoa. person. One person from Reading allowed in per show. That's the yeah. problem. <laughs> do you, is there anything about Reading you miss? You must have nostalgia for it. Where you grew up, you always have nostalgia I, for. Yeah, of course I do. Yeah. I, I, I grew up in a sort of you know working class estate. My dad was a labourer. Mum was a housewife. And I didn't even know I was poor because we were all in that, that boat. And and it, with this comes out in the film really because. There was a sort of nobility in poverty. There was no degradation. You didn't feel sorry for yourself. My mum was, you know, planting roses every day and cleaning the house, and we tried to put that in the film. My summers were brilliant. I, I do remember them as sunny, and I know that's probably yeah. a false memory, but this is a sort of quite a glossy sort of film. It's not a depressing kitchen sink sort of British drama. It's like, um, it's like our Saturday night... Fever, really. Yeah, so it's, it's about kids having women growing up, getting exactly. together. Yeah. Trying to escape maybe that small town. We put There's a line in the film that my mum actually said to me when I was 18. I said, oh, I'm going to France. She went, what do you want to go there for? She went, there's parts of red in you ain't seen. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really sweet. But that's the sort of mentality of yeah, like, you know, yeah. a lot of people. Well, uh, she had a point as well, of course, I'm of sure. Course, yeah, there, there are parts of red in Ireland. Um, so, uh, so, in a way, uh, I guess this is, uh, you're putting a lot of yourself in this. It's a very personal thing. Well, everything you do is autobiographical. You know, I worked in an office for seven years, did the office. Extras was about you know, my experience in media. So, yeah, this is my memories of growing up and, you know, me and my older brothers and sisters and friends and... Uh, yeah. So when you're working now, when you work as a director, how are you to work with? Uh, because you're quite a lazy person. Do you know what? I am a lazy no, person. No, he is a lazy person. I am. I, so I, and I think I was the least ambitious man ever, and, uh, and now I've become a workaholic. You really... It's really weird. When I'm an actor, um, I suppose I'm a bit more neurotic. I worry about things. I sort of like... I, I can hear an ant crawling over some cotton wool. And I'm going, oh, what's that? What's that noise? So you and get I'm... distracted easily? I do, I do. But are you like Christian Bale? Do you get angry? Do you shout? No, of people? course not, because I'm so worried. I don't even send my suit back now in a restaurant if it's cold, because I'm like, oh, he's changed. Yeah. So <laughs> now I sort of suffer in silence. I, I sort of bottle it up. But I am a sort of neurotic actor, not a director. A director, everything's fun, it's great. And, and there's no more strain directing and acting. And, you know what I mean? It, it, it's fine. But you have a different sort of mindset. Uh, with directing, everything's great, and we can do it again, and I'm quite rational. And with acting, I go, oh, that's, no, OK. And I put people off. And I was doing this scene with Jennifer Garner at, at a date, and um, I say, oh, no, no, people have got to sort of, like, mime. And I go, so oh, no whispering. you've got extras behind you, they're meant to be eating in a exactly. restaurant, yeah. But like, some of them sort of whisper. I go, oh, no, don't, don't, can everyone stop whispering? Just, just mime, OK? And there was a couple, and a, a sort of a 60-year-old couple just down there, and I could hear them sort of whispering, like, oh, that. And then I could hear them, their plate scraping. And I was going, can you take their plate away? And I was like, giving them dirty looks like that. I went, OK, did the take, and afterwards the producer brought them over and said, oh, this is a couple who've paid £5,000 to be in the scene. <laughs> and I went, thank you so much. <laughs> and they went, we're OK. I said, you were brilliant. <laughs> you were excellent. So they give them money to charity. I know. I, I felt like the work. worst, most spoilt person in the world. That's why I come on this show, to yeah, make myself yeah, feel better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, here you are. There's a photograph of you with the lovely, gorgeous Jennifer Garner. Now, I've seen the movie. The movie, this movie's out. When is this film out of here? Um, tw 2nd of October. 2nd of October. OK, this is out pretty soon. Uh, and it's a kind of a... It starts off, you think, it's a romantic comedy, then it gets a bit more serious. Uh, yeah, it's a high-concept film. It's set in a world 
where the human race hasn't evolved the gene for lying. So everyone tells the exact truth. Everyone's harsh. They say things like, oh, isn't your baby ugly? And, you know, it's things like that. So whatever's in their mind, they'll say. They say it's the absolute truth. And, it's, and um, if you're a fat little loser, like me, um, you know, I get insulted and, you know, I, I, I try and woo this woman and she's out of my league, but then I discover I can lie. And so I become the most powerful man in the world. Because you're the uh, only one who lies. And they believe everything I say. I can go to a casino, I can do anything I want. And, um, and it's what I do with that, that power. And yeah, that's the, the invention of lying. It's out of October the 2nd. Uh, let me ask you about the rest of the cast. Jennifer Garner, fabulous actress. It, it's it's amazing But you cast. have uh, unbelievable Philip it's... Seymour Hoffman, who's one of the best actors on the planet We've right got um, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Edward Norton, uh, Rob Lowe, Jonah Hill, Tina Fey. Now, how do you get the... You, you presumably, they know of you, of your Jason work. Jason Yeah, I call them up. Yeah, okay. they know me from the They must know you from extras, TV and stuff yeah. like that. And so, uh, but I didn't know Philip Seymour Hoffman, actually. I thought he'd be great for this part. He plays the, uh, the slob of a, a barman. And I called the agent and she went, um, well, he's very busy. Can you send him a personal email? And so I sent this email. I said, dear Philip, um, would you be in my new film? There is no money, as I spent the entire acting budget on testicular implants. <laughs> um, and I said, don't think of them as my testicles. Think of them as our testicles. <laughs> and she called me back and laughing, going, he loved it, he's going to do it. <laughs> so, you know, you take a chance. OK, uh, now, here's the thing. President Obama gets elected in the United States of America. Everyone's excited, everyone's happy. What does Ricky do? He sends him a letter. What did you... What I did had you, to. What did you say? Because Paris Hilton was over here. <laughs> and um, she was doing a programme, um, my British best, best friend. friend. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah, which is fine. I, I don't yeah. have to watch it. But then <laughs> I, I read in the paper that she'd bought a house quite near me. Yeah. And I thought, no, enough is enough. So I, I wrote to the president. <laughs> I did. I wrote, I said, dear uh, President Obama. So you, Obama. you went straight to the top. I did. I wrote to the I said, dear to President Obama. I mean, this, I said, this is clearly retaliation for us sending you posh spice. <laughs> um, <laughs> I propose a swap. <laughs> Send her back, you can have Paris. Exactly, yeah. Did, now, did you get a response? He invited me to the White House. No! Yeah. Yeah. No way! He did, yeah. And um, my suit was in the dry cleaners, and this is absolutely true, I had to go in my pyjamas. I did, I did. You went in your pyjamas? I had to, otherwise I'd have been late and, and it said no jeans. Well, you see, did, you... So, <laughs> so what, the pyjamas didn't look like pyjamas? No, they sort of, they're sort of like... Like jogging of, pants? They're sort of like black, sort of, you know, that's that stretchy. With they're you like what? lycra. <laughs> Honestly, I look like Kerry Katona. Honestly, I just... <laughs> and a T-shirt. Uh, you've met just about everyone, haven't you? Who, are there anyone you haven't met? You, uh, you... Nelson Mandela. I'm the only cel celebrity that hasn't met Nelson Mandela. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, here's one thing. I know Ricky's arrived at the very top of his game when you get invited. And this is ge genuinely. This is when you know someone's become uh, as famous as you can get. You get invited on Sesame Street. That is it. That's as good Highlight as it gets. My career. That Highlight is as good my career, as it gets. without doubt. People say, is it the awards or whatever? It's me and Alma. No, I didn't know you. I didn't know you'd done this until uh, we were getting. Ready I love so when, Alma. Did, when did they invite you on? Um, There's Alma. You got to love tickle uh, me, Alma. About, they invited me on a, a couple of years ago, and I couldn't make it, and they, they um, kept inviting me. And I could do it this year, um, and uh, I went along, and they let me write a song. I, I sing Alma a lullaby, and it's just this crazy song, and I fell in love with Almo. and I didn't see the bloke underneath. It, it was just I love Almo. I, I honestly, he sent me um, for my birthday. He sent me a little thing, and you squeeze the little hand. And he goes, "Hello, Mr. Ricky." No, I, 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 I'm You've slightly obsessed. I think it's like I like little round-headed freaks like Carl Pilkington yes. and Elmo, <laughs> and, and, and I just I can't get enough of them. Hey, that's fabulous! What an exciting thing to do! Yeah, that's out. Um, that's out in uh, November. What yeah, is it? In America. That's, Sesame Street. Yeah, that's on. It's not yeah, that's on. Yeah, that's an outtake. That's <laughs> not in the show. Yeah, necrophilia. Today's letter N brings us <laughs> necrophilia. <laughs> that's not going to happen, I hope. No. Uh, Alga, you better go backstage, because uh, you and Jamie have got to get your gear on, because we're going to be bowled against by Stuart Board, one of the I'm fastest so bowlers. I'm so scared of that. I'm genuinely so scared. 93 miles an hour, and I've, I've said to him, go as hard as you can against us. Let's see what we're made of, OK? Oh. OK. Really? Yeah. Is that right, Stuart? Of course. Yeah. yeah. He looks about 11. <laughs> it looks like Draco Malfoy is going to bowl against us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, looks like okay. a really tall Macaulay Culkin, doesn't he? <laughs> so young. <laughs> We're sledging him now. We should be doing oh, this. Oh, yeah, what am I doing that for? <laughs> OK, uh, when you're going to go get ready, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr Ricky Gervais. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. I love you. I love the necrophilia. Thank you. Thanks to all my guests tonight. Gervais at the stump. I don't need to do this. <laughs>
Go on, Jamie. Oh! Not bad. Oh! It's hard. Give me your best shot, Ward. Come on. You want to move back, everyone? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> but that was a foul ball. Of course it wasn't. <laughs> oh! Welcome to Friday Night with me, Jonathan Ross. Welcome to Alan Carr, China! <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> so I'm talking about mine, don't I? Oh. I've just been messed. Oh. <laughs> don't patronise me, Alicia. <laughs>